Happy Wednesday. I want to talk to you about something today. I want to make a statement today. I want to tell you this. I don't need your help to help you. I don't even want your help to help you. Huh? I'll show you how that works and why I would make a statement like that. Glory to God. Jesus would have told people the same thing. Huh? I'll prove it to you. Say this with me. The rest of my life is the best of my life. The best of my life is the rest of my life. Everything I touch turns to gold. I am smart, getting smarter every day. I am extremely talented. Great things are coming my way. Everything always works out for me. I am a wonderful person. Pastor Jim is a wonderful pastor. Pastor Jim is the ultimate pastor because I get incredible results. Hmm. This is going to be good. Huh? Share this video with everybody you know. Please. I know we get a lot of comments on this one. I get a lot of comments on them anyway. If you can tell, I'm a little bit excited about doing this. Because it just, just occurred to me. I was doing some notes. I'm uh, putting together. We're working on another book, actually. We're starting another book. And so the first thing I do when I write books is I compile notes. And I've got like 50 pages of notes, handwritten notes. And I'll take those notes and I'll start to organize them and start to type them out. And uh, once I do that, then the book will start to take shape. And it's a, it, it happens over a period of months. We probably won't see this one until next year. But it's something we're working on. But one of the statements I made in there, in my notes, and I happened to see it yesterday or the day before, was that I don't need your help to help you. And I was just, what I was thinking about was, was Jesus. And I thought, well, that pertains to me too. That pertains to me too. Call me today if you need to get your prayers answered. And if you need healing, you need to increase, whatever it is you need. You need to find your dog or find your cat. I mean, somebody lost their cat. Didn't, couldn't find their cat for a week. They called me. I prayed about it. Within an hour, the cat came walking out. There, there, there was the cat just walking around. Glory to God. Now, how that cat got there, I have no idea. All I know is that God's power brought back the cat. I'll tell you, there's power in the Holy Ghost, folks. There's so much power in the, in, in, in the, in the Holy Spirit. It can, there's nothing God can't do. God even said to the people one time, is anything too hard for God? Nothing is too hard for God. Jesus said, all things are possible to them that believe. Well, I believe. And so all things are possible for me. And I can make all things happen for people because I believe. Glory to God. You'll get to that point. You watch these videos long enough, you'll start doing what I'm doing. Because some of the people are already doing it. Huh? I praise God for that. We got people in our church doing a lot of good things right now. Because they've been hearing this for so long. Huh? Hallelujah. Jesus told his disciples. He said to them in Luke chapter 9. He called his disciples together. And he gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. Do we have power and authority over all devils and we can cure diseases? Yes. Yes. Jesus gave us that power and authority to do that. That's a whole different subject, but he did give it to us. And he sent them to preach the kingdom and to heal the sick. Jesus also preached the kingdom and healed the sick. Do you know that every time Jesus sent people out, he told them to preach the kingdom and heal the sick? How many pastors are trying to heal the sick? I got news for you. The ones who aren't will give an account for it. When they stand out at the judgment seat of Christ, when they go to heaven, God is going to ask them, 
Why didn't you heal the sick? I don't want to have that conversation. I'm not going to have that conversation because I'm doing everything I can to heal the sick and to heal their finances too. Poverty is financial sickness. So we heal that. And people live in abundance. Glory to God. Now, here's the thing. Zechariah, Luke chapter 1. Go back a few pages. You need to read this. Because I'm telling you what, this is the key to receiving from me when you call me. Is in Luke chapter 1. The story of Zechariah. He's, a, he's the priest. He's in the temple working. He's lighting incense. That was his duty. And he looked up by the altar, and there on the right-hand side of the altar was an angel standing there. It was Gabriel. Gabriel, we believe, was the messenger angel. Michael was the warrior angel. Tells us in Daniel. Warrior. But... Tells us a couple other places too about Michael. He was he was the tough guy, tough angel. And Zechariah, uh, the angel came to Zechariah, and he says, "Your prayer is heard." Apparently, they had been praying about a baby. They had probably prayed for years about a baby. They never had a baby. She was old by this time, and so was he. And the angel said, "And." Your prayer is heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, is going to have a baby. And you're going to call him John. And he shall be great in the sight of his people. And he will be the voice in the wilderness proclaiming the Lord. He's going to be the forerunner of Jesus. Jesus called John the Baptist the greatest prophet who ever lived. But he also said, that the least person in the kingdom of God is greater than him. Because John the Baptist was not born again. Although he is in heaven. Because he was a righteous man. Glory to God. You'll meet him when you get there. Just like you will meet Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You're actually going to sit down with these people. I mean, it's just going to be amazing. Don't ask me what all goes on because I don't know. But anyway... He says, and he shall be great and filled with the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb. And he'll go before Jesus. And Zechariah said unto the angel in verse 16, how can I know this? My wife is old. I'm old. What's he doing? He's speaking doubt and unbelief. He doubts the word of the Lord brought to him by the angel Gabriel. And Gabriel says, this is going to happen all right. But you can't talk no more. You can't talk no more. Until this transpires. He closed his mouth. Why did he close his mouth? Because Zechariah would have screwed up the plans of God by speaking doubt and unbelief. You cannot receive from God. I don't care who you are or what the circumstances and situation is if you're speaking doubt and unbelief. Even Jesus could do no miracles when the people were speaking doubt and unbelief. Read it in Mark chapter 6. But here, he closes his mouth. Because God did not need the help of Zechariah for his wife to have a baby. So many people want to help me make things happen for them. I can't tell you how many people I have prayed over and spoken over and blessed and broken curses over. And they'll, get, they'll, they'll immediately say to me, now what else do I need to do? That is doubt and unbelief. Because they're not believing they received what I did. It doesn't matter what they think. Because the angel closing Zacharias' mouth 
did not change what he thought or did not change the doubt and unbelief that was in his heart, but it kept it from coming out of his mouth. It kept him from speaking doubt and unbelief. I don't need your help to help you. All I need for you to do when I speak over you is to be quiet. If you will be quiet after I speak over you, you will receive what I say every single time. Because I'm speaking the word of the Lord with faith. Now, I'm not being arrogant or bragging. I'm just telling you how it works. Eli spoke over Hannah in 1 Samuel. All she did was smile. And, and, and then he blessed her. And she went home and had five more babies. What he said happened. She did not help him. The Sudamite woman wanted a baby. Elisha spoke over her. She had her baby. Another woman was, her, her children were going to be taken away from her because she didn't have any money to pay her debts. Elijah said, go and fill up the vessels with oil. Then go sell the oil. She never said, all she did was what he told her to do. He didn't, she didn't say nothing. Don't try to help me when I pray over you. Because all you will do is show doubt and unbelief. The minute you show doubt and unbelief, you're on your own. What I say has been nullified. I We had a, a wonderful, wonderful man, owned a pretty good sized manufacturing company, and we kept him afloat because he was struggling financially. But he was constantly saying to me, well, now what else do I need to do? And trying to make it happen. There is nothing else you need to do to make it happen once I speak over you. One man who was a very well-known healing evangelist, his kidneys shut down, his liver shut down. Finally, when he was dying, he did call me. I spoke over him and his liver started up, his, his kidneys started up. And I said to him, after I got done, I said, now that's the end of it. You're all set. Just lay there and get your and heal and you'll go home very soon. His kidneys started up, his liver started up. He went home the next day. But he put a posting on Facebook about how arrogant I was to say that that was the end of it once I spoke over him. And guess what? Within a month or two or three months, maybe six months, I don't remember, it came back. He cursed himself. Doubt and unbelief is what he was. He was doubting and unbelieving that what I said was that that was the end of it. Believe me, once when Jesus prayed over people, that was the end of it. That was the end of it. No more to do. Just relax and let God heal you. Just go about your business and let your finances grow. Jesus said God's word will grow while you sleep and while you're awake. I mean, once I speak over you, and I'm telling you how it works, people, the power of God comes into you to affect what we need. There's nothing more you need to do except be quiet. Don't even... I mean, so many people got blessed in our church years ago because I was speaking the blessing over them. They didn't even know what was going on. I didn't know what was going on, but it worked. And I'm telling you what, did they ever get blessed? People became millionaires in our church. Hundreds of thousands of dollars. New jobs, new cars, new homes. I mean, it was just amazing what was going on. Because nobody ever questioned what I was doing. Now, people always, well, what can I do to help? I'm going to speak it. I'm going to speak it every day. I'm going to speak it and do this. And do. They're trying to make it happen. Which, no, which means they're on their own. What I said doesn't matter. If you want what I say to matter, be quiet. Allow it to happen and you will be so blessed.